The Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, the perfect place for a pre-match pint. Gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Wednesday Weekly Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm Lord Hills Brown with me on the line. First of all, we have uh, Mr. Marriott, Jamesy e. Hobbin. How the devil are you? Um, top of the morning to you. I'm near bad. <laughs> there, uh, I'm not going to try and do the accents because I think it's, yeah, it's mildly racist, isn't it? But um, they are the uh, the phrases that I picked up whilst um, whilst away. And just calling everything grand. That's what people do in Ireland, call everything grand. By the way, um, while I was away last week, um, I noticed, first of all, Sheffield Wednesday won while, while I was away. Second time that that's happened in a row now. Um, and I did take in some football at the big Dublin derby, which is Shamrock Rovers versus St. Patrick's Athletic. St. Patrick's weekend in Dublin went to see St. Patrick's Athletic. I mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, it was absolutely <laughs> shit. It was terrible. Doesn't like, um, sorry, hi, I'm here. Doesn't like David McClements or Liam McMenamin or David Keyes or somebody from the old academy days play for the first one? Um, for Shamrock Rovers, I was I was supporting yeah. Shamrock Rovers because they're playing Celtic's colours. Um, no, I, I didn't know any of the players on the pitch. I honestly didn't, yeah. and I, I didn't I didn't see a team sheet or anything. So there may have been yeah. names that I might have recognised, but certainly there were no faces that I kind of thought, "Ooh, I wonder who that is." Um, yeah. And if there was anyone on that pitch that we'd had in our academy, then I can safely say we didn't lose anything by not keeping them. <laughs> Uh, and Victoria's here. Victoria, my darling. How the devil are you? <laughs> the most useless piece of information <laughs> ever. Hi, my lord. You're all right. I'm fantastic, sweet. Perhaps I'm better for hearing your wonderful, wonderful Lose tones. tones I, know. I, know. I hear it all the time. Honestly, <laughs> people stop me in the street now and just say, Will you just talk to me with your beautiful English <laughs> rose accent? And I'm like, No. Ah, ah I will cook. What's the one you say? Go on, then. <laughs> uh, right then, ladies and gents, uh, some of you may be aware that a founding member um, of the Wednesday Week team, Eddie, um, has been absent from the podcast uh, for quite some time now, since the end of last season. Um, we've been unable to talk about it very much because of an ongoing legal situation, but I am pleased to be able to make a, a, an official statement on behalf of the Wednesday Week now. Um, in May of last year, um, a conversation was had regarding the extension to Eddie's contract on the podcast. Initially, relations were brilliant. They were beautifully cordial between both parties, and we felt confident that a deal could be reached in time for pre-season training. However, in July, Eddie revealed that he had chosen to be represented in his negotiations by Boylem Talent Management. He claimed that he was carrying the podcasts with his football knowledge and his comedy talent. He also requested that he be referred to as the governor and produced a list of demands that included, but not limited to, one bottle of red wine per recording, his own parking space at the Riverside Cafe, and two weeks use of the facilities at my country house every single year. Now, the Wednesday week came back with a counter offer, which was a, a packet of scampi fries and a signed photograph of Danny Sonner. And this was quite bluntly rejected. And so we had no option to just break off negotiations. The two parties remained at an impasse until last week, when we received a notification that Eddie would like to be addressed to both the podcast listeners and his podcast colleagues. So, without further ado, I am delighted to hand over to Eddie, who will now read a prepared statement. Thank you, Lord Hillsborough. I would like to offer an unequivocal apology to you, to my fellow podcast colleagues, and to our listeners for my actions over the past eight months. I was badly advised by my former representatives at Boylem Talent Management, <laughs> who made entirely erroneous claims about the level of my football knowledge, about my comedic ability, <laughs> and about the size and girth of my penis. <laughs> Furthermore, their assertion that I would quickly be signed to co-present a major BBC entertainment show alongside TV's Dan Walker, 
as well as replacing Jamie Carragher as a as Sky Sports pundit, turned out to be wholly false and almost laughably unrealistic. I recognise now that I would be nothing without the love and support of Lord Hillsborough, Daniel Fudge, Dickie Davis, Victoria off of Tipping Point, and Channel 5's James Marriott. I mean, he does the Wednesday Week podcast. He knows what he's talking about. Not to mention that of the tens of thousands of fans of the show, I humbly request that all concerned accept my sincere apology. To demonstrate my commitment to the podcast going forward, I would like to get on my knees and kiss your ring, Lord Hillsborough. <laughs> I would also, by way of penance, like to present you with my most treasured possession, my Wednesday week muff, and ask on bended knee whether I could possibly retake my place in the pantheon of the immortals who make this podcast the single greatest achievement in human history. And he's back, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Yay! Well, that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. Thank you for listening. And um, we'll see you all um, next week. I'm so glad I was muted. I've never made such noises. Was there a, a um, noises in was there a put myself on mute, didn't listen version of that? Because <laughs> I just got I just got bored as shit halfway through, mate. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know, at least Dan Fudge isn't here. Absolutely having my life for this. So yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm gonna, Welcome I'm gonna, back. I'm going to earn this. I'm going to earn this back. <laughs> You're back in. Screw, screw us over again, and I, and I'll cut you. All right, mate. <laughs> hey, the company oh you God. keep nowadays. Hey, I'm not messing. <laughs> Now, if, if you are a first-time listener and you've seen um, the interview that we have coming up, don't worry, it is on its way. We're going to put that in at the end of the podcast. So if James does get a little bit edgy... A bit naughty, James. A bit naughty. <laughs> yeah, uh, hub, hub. You'll know why. Uh, but before all that, we are going to uh, discuss the, uh, the bit of Wednesday news we've got. So first of all, we go from the return of Eddie to the return of Fessy. Nando's back, boys and girls. And he's been uh, playing for the under-23s and scoring a lovely goal as well. How lovely is this news? The best thing about this is that he attempted to score direct from the kickoff. I mean, this is what? the... This is the equivalent, isn't it, of like on a night out walking in a club and just pulling your pants down and just slapping your penis on the <laughs> on the bar. You know, it just his first kick of a football, three seconds into the match, and he tried to score. Fair play to the lad. Good on him. He actually tried from the halfway line what? later on as well. Um, just just out of interest, uh, does anyone know what bars Fessy goes to? Just just asking for friends. <laughs> But no, I mean, all these 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 players have got coming back now from from injury. That, 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 so I mentioned it last week. They've been they've been held back to make sure they fit, make sure they're proper. And 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 last week I was trying to get across that I'm looking forward to the back end of the season. I'm not expecting us to to sort of rush up the table and and aim for playoffs or anything at all like this. What I am expecting is to to enjoy this end of of this season and have all these wonderful players back and not have to worry a great deal about. God forbid, a relegation battle. Are you guys feeling the same way? It's going to feel like a new season, I think. Because we we are going to get the players back who we we kind of thought we were going to be watching and cheering on from, from August last year. Um, and it's going to be a gift that keeps on giving because they're literally almost staggered, aren't they? They're slated to all come back kind of week after week. It's going to be, you know, like there's, there's a, 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 an amazing surprise guest every single game from now till the end of the season and it's gonna it's gonna give us a real boost i'm 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 honestly properly looking forward to it it is like i don't know if you guys remember but you're like in the 90s my mum always used to take me to like the smash hits road show at the arena and like they'd be like right next up is pj and duncan but oh my god life can't get any better than this like barry bannon and they'd be like now is Tommy Kitten, you just lose your shit. And that is what is going to happen. Like Eddie said, week after week after week, it's just going to be boom, Hutchinson, boom, Barry, boom, Fessy. And one day, one day soon, maybe Stephen Fletcher. <laughs> I I really hope all that's true. I don't know. I've, I've got this nasty kind of thing now that, see, I don't go away again now until the middle of April. So there's a fair chance that we'll lose every game until um, until then. 
but the, it's the whole I'm... the whole game the next one that I'm away for so that's probably the next win now I've got you covered. I'm 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 going to Dubai in uh, in ten days time. So uh... of course you are. Are you skiing? Yeah. <laughs> are you skiing down the like no, whatever no, that it, hotel is? It, are it, you all skiing they, in Dubai, Eddie? Are you? They, they've, They've got a full on, you know, like um, course, like escape at Castleford. They've they got do. a full ski slope <laughs> in Dubai. Of course they do. No, no, it's it's going to be it's a hot holiday. Um, <laughs> you haven't been in this hot tub, my lord. <laughs> yeah, I, I've avoided it like the plague. Um, right, so yes, it's, it's, really can't wait for for all that to happen. The other sort of bit of Wednesday news we've had from this week as well, of course, Atty represented his country um, once. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. He represented them good. He represented him hard, didn't he? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did actually score as well. Uh, but the goal was... He did. Score. No, but he did score. That's what really annoys me. And that's why VAR should be everywhere. And I know I've spoken against it before, but now I am pro VAR. I'm going to start wearing it on my T-shirt. Like, he scored that goal. That was not offside. That was an absolutely disgusting decision. And that should have been... At his international goal, uh, I do. I don't know. A lot of people seem to like it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. But uh, whenever he posts, I just do reply with "I love you" and a photo of us two hugging. <laughs> <laughs> One day he'll notice. Did you say a photo Does of it... you two? What did you say? A photo of you two? Well, I said hugging, but actually I'm hugging him. He looks very uncomfortable oh, right. in the situation. <laughs> I don't know it's... if it's just a dodgy line. It honestly did not sound like hugging. Did it not? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Makes you want to hug me. What rhymes with hug me? Well, yeah. Yeah. Atty <laughs> rhymes with hug me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> James, you've made your, your feelings clear on Atty in the past. Um, and I noticed that when you were chatting with Barry, he, he had certain views on Atty and you didn't yeah. disagree. No, well, I, I tell you what. At the moment, I, I, I can't, I can't disagree with anyone when it comes to Atty because um, you know he's he is coming up with the goods and um, he's he's doing the stuff that he wasn't doing before in terms of the fact that he you know, he's scoring goals, um, including you know the the ones that you would expect a striker to score, which is what he's not always done in the past. You know that that goal against Leeds, as as fortuitous as it was, the winning goal against Leeds, um, it. It was, you know, he's clean through on goal, and in the past, that's normally where it's not necessarily his strength, is it? But, um, you know, yeah, I, 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 and I've, I've not made any kind of, uh, I'm not trying to disguise this in any way. I, I would struggle to argue with anyone at the moment that says that Atty is, is, is pretty much our best player right now because he is. Do we think he will get Player of the Month this month? Because I have yeah. voted for him for the last yeah. three or four years. Like, he literally have. signed him. I've voted every month for him. There like could be people to. that that point blank refuse to just because it's him. But why? Like What's you know, I'm with? I'm not his biggest fan, and yet I have to you know hold my hands up and say, yeah, he probably does deserve it. Uh, but there will be people that'll be like, no, he's rubbish. He's a terrible footballer, and just won't budge from um, from from that standpoint. But, but then the you think, but who else? There isn't like... a clear kind of another front runner, is there? Because if if everyone if everyone who hated Atty said, oh well, he said we're all going to vote for, I don't know. Um, you know, Joe Wildsmith or whatever, um, then I could I could see someone else kind of sneaking in. But I just can't see that there's an obvious person that everyone who doesn't like Atty will vote for. It'll just split the remaining vote. It'll probably be one of those whereby Atty will win with like 70-odd percent and then second place will be Barry Bannon with, um, with six or something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, going from our our Wednesday future with uh, with Atty New, he is going to be our future, James. Um, let's have a little uh, heart back to the past. I mean, as Wednesday fans, we do like to talk about the past, don't we? Uh, but this coming Monday will be the twenty twenty fifth year anniversary of the uh, the FA Cup semi final against the other side of the city. Now, obviously, this was an amazing day, wasn't it, boys and girls? How much fun! Did you have on this day it's up there with the best isn't it i mean it's yeah a absolutely tremendous and it was in my early days of being a fan and in a way i kind of regret I, it, it was fun being a kid and 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 obviously you know that that whole season was fun being a kid but i look back at it now and think guy you know I, can you imagine how much more we would appreciate playing sheffield united at wembley in an fa cup semi-final now after everything that we've all seen and been through and stuff than um, than you do in kind of your first 
two or three years. I mean, obviously not for Eddie. It was about his 20th year of following Wednesday. But, um, you know, for, <laughs> for, 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 wow. for, for me in kind of my, you know, early days when, when I was a wee lad, it was, um, yeah, it was it was tremendous. And, and still really, I mean, there aren't many bigger wins, are there, in the history of Sheffield Wednesday Football Club? You know, it's got to be in the top five. Can I actually um, please put a plea out here, like genuine, genuine plea? Um, there was a, it was either Calendar or Look North did a feature about the match. Um, and we had it recorded on a videotape. Um, I don't have it anymore. Uh, I've got it. Don't have videotapes. Do you? There's a guy that goes, oh, we had some rape parties, rape parties in the streets. And that's my darling granddad who I lost, I don't know, 20, 21 years ago now. And that is like the best clip of him ever because he's so drunk and he never, ever got drunk. But my granddad was the guy that like went <laughs> viral in the days that he couldn't go viral, that everyone used to talk about him going, oh, we had some rape parties in the street. And I didn't get to go because uh, my mum and dad shafted me as usual and just went for a weekend in London on their own. Um, but that is Didn't even go to the match. Yes. <laughs> all night long in a hotel suite i look back on that entire season and um I, I i regret that i was kind of caught up in this the idea that this is how it's always going to be you know because wednesday finished third the year before and i always felt that we you know we deserved to win it and you know we, we'd we'd kind of bottled it it wasn't that we were we were a worse team than either leeds or man united the season before we were better than everybody and we just we bottled it with two bad defeats against leeds and arsenal and we bottled it in the derby games you know the, that game and that era had such a huge impact on um, on an entire generation of fans. That has kept the fire burning for me and for many other Wednesday fans for 25 years. It's incredible that it's been that long. In all seriousness, like, to all of you, is there, like, a standout memory from that day for you? Because, like, I know I said about my granddad on the Look North stuff, but I know that he couldn't afford to go down. So I actually stayed at home with my nan and granddad. It had been about seven or eight at the time. Yeah, seven, nearly eight. Um, and I remember getting up in the morning and putting every single Wednesday shirt in the house on a coat hanger and hanging it <laughs> from either a picture or a piece of furniture or a lamp fitting in the house. I remember watching it like sat on the sofa and my nan knitting. Do any of you guys like, have a specific memory? 25 years ago, we were all significantly like younger, like Eddie had only just turned 30. So do we have <laughs> to, like, you does, did. Does anyone have like <laughs> does anyone have a specific memory? You know the the, the one for me was um that away kit that season. You know the, the the yellow and black pinstripe away kit. It was like the Paul Warhurst kit, you know, that was the, the kit that he'd scored um you know against Derby in the quarter final. That was the you know the kit that kind of carried us through so many amazing performances in you know in what seemed to be endless numbers of games that season. So yeah, when I when I think back to Wembley ninety three for the semi-final, I didn't, I, I didn't go to the cup final. I wasn't, I wasn't lucky enough to do that. But um, for the semi-final, what I remember was the yellow and black more than the blue and white, which was really weird. James, <laughs> Lord Hillsborough, either of you? I mean, my biggest memory of that is obviously the Chris Waddle goal and, and, and sort of jumping around once it gone in and then sort of turning back and, and, and looking at Chris Waddle and thinking, has he got an erection? Because <laughs> I am <laughs> sure that when he's... he's he, he, runs he, he confessed it, didn't he? He confessed that he did. <laughs> he sticks his hand in the air and you think, my word, Chris, you are excited about scoring that wonderful goal, aren't you? Yeah, James, I'd, I'd say Waddle, I'd say, I'd say what, Waddle's hard on as well, yeah. No! Yeah. <laughs> Can we not have a nice conversation? Like, seriously? No, I'm, no, I'm being serious, yeah. Uh, yeah, the oh, Waddle goal, just the Waddle goal. And, and I can't tell you how many times I've listened back to it. Uh, the Martin Tyler commentary... Um, what all goes for goal? What a start for Sheffield Wednesday! You know all, all that the, that season video. I think I wore it out watching it back, um, and just that moment. You know the season video starts with that moment. I remember the Bob Ballard commentary of it on Radio Sheffield. Bob Ballard was one of the worst football yes. commentators in the world at the time because he never got yeah. excited yeah, when anyone scored. You couldn't that. tell, and even he like there was a little yeah. rumble in his voice. Like when, when Mark Bright scored. Uh, the uh, the Bob Ballard commentary was just incredible. bright with the header. Oh, it's a goal! Sheffield Wednesday has got, and it was like really. But but even he got excited about uh, Waddle scoring, you know. And that that yeah, I mean that's it's it's just one of those moments that for any Wednesday fan, you know, playing your nearest rival, your um, you know, I, I mean you know, Steel City rival, in an FA Cup semi final, scoring in the first minute with a free kick from thirty odd yards out. 
Uh, That's Roy the Rover stuff. It just sits in your head, doesn't it? It's just there forever. Absolutely. The other sort of really memorable part of that game is to just remember Carlton Palmer sort of helping Alan Cork around the pitch, helping the aged, (laughs) making sure he didn't hurt himself. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. Well done, Carlton. You made us proud that day. (laughs) Whether you're celebrating a birthday... A wedding or anniversary. Maybe you've passed your driving test. Or you've landed a new job. Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or Odable 14 232 6121. Right then, ladies and gents. So uh, we're going to just quickly run through the upcoming games. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got Preston on Friday. Uh, and Preston are going rather good guns at the moment, aren't they, boys and girls? Uh, last couple of games, they uh, won Sunderland, but who hasn't? Um, they did lose to Fulham. Uh, they, they won Bristol, which, again, we rather famously failed. Beat! Um, <laughs> one uh, and uh, they, they also won Bolton as well so they, they are doing really rather well at the moment are you guys worried about this game or do you think we're going to come back sort of full fluster um, I'm going we'll lose Fair enough. Well, simple as that I don't know um, yeah today. Fulham are going good it's after an international break it's almost like kind of like the, things kind of reset a bit and uh, the fact that we won our last game before uh, the international break does that really play much of a part I don't know I really don't know I'm looking forward to it it feels like you know it's, it's for me it's a while since I've been to a match so it'll be um, yeah it'll be good absolutely and it after does that... feel like ages doesn't it and I think I'm just looking through like their team like now and obviously, you know, Tommy Spur will score a hat trick. Um, but other than that, Eddie, have you noticed that Sean Maguire plays for them now? I can't believe it. I, I, I didn't know he'd left Holly Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, once we've finished beating uh, Preston North End, we've got Sunderland, and this has got to be a game we're going to win, hasn't it? Surely. I know we, we say it and it comes back to bite us in the arse, but surely to God, we've got to beat Sunderland. Is this look, what we're going to announce that Stephen Fletcher is fit? I, th- I really feel like this is the moment. Really it do. would. The, the most Wednesday thing in the world that could happen would be for us to beat Preston 5 0 and then go up to Sunderland and lose. So I fully <laughs> expect that to happen. They just look beaten and broken down. Uh, I was uh, up at Tom's football training. It was in Middlesbrough, um, and he, he's, uh, he, he's part of the academy system up there. Um, and his coach, uh, n- you know, not only uh, trains young children, but he also helps with... Um, uh, with the, all three of the Northeast clubs, as far as kind of community is concerned. Uh, and he was on a coaching course with Chris Coleman uh, in the last week. He, he said the man just looked like beaten down. He said he's a big, big guy, but he's walking like, you know, he's a foot shorter than he actually is because there's not there's nothing that he can do. He's tried everything and that team will not respond. Um, Sheffield Wednesday have the ability to make every other team look like world beaters at times um it would be probably the worst result of the season if we went away to Sunderland and um and made them look like a competent football club because right now they are not they're marking time and they're going down to league one so it is you know, our responsibility is to help them uh on that way let's be honest here very much like Carlton Palmer helped Mr Cole. yeah absolutely uh, put him out of the misery <laughs> Uh, right then, ladies and gents. So uh, that's going to bring an end to to this section of the podcast for this week. We're going to do the sign outs now, so you can uh, listen to uh, the wonderful interview uh, James has got lined up there for us. So first of all, Eddie Old Bean. If people want to find you over there on the social medias, where can we do that, old boy? I am, as always, at Sausage Arms on Twitter. Part of the reason that I've come back is because um, I've noticed a real downturn in the number of people uh, following me. Um, sending me abuse, <laughs> telling me I don't know anything about football. So I'm so happy for that to continue now. So yes, at Sausage Arms on Twitter and Instagram, I'm, I'm, I'm here for a week and then I'll be in Dubai 
feel free to send me all kinds of uh, of abuse about um, you know me posting pictures of uh, of me on water slides and things like that. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. <laughs> Victoria, my darling, if people want to see your tweets to Eddie, giving him lots of abuse, where can we do that? My dear? I'm afraid they'll be done on private text messages due to the language in them. Um, but you can find me on Twitter at Victoria1867. And do you know what I found out tonight? You can find me on Sky Box Sets. So if you go on to Box Sets and search for Tipping Point and it's Series 4, I think it's like Episode 8 or 9, you can watch me on Tipping Point, but I lose, so I'll ruin it now. But I just, I found out tonight. Very exciting. Yay! See you, Mick, on the telly. Um, Jamesy, old boy, if people want to find you over there on the Twitter each, where can we do that? Uh, at James Marriott. Very boring at the moment because um, I'm, well, not on holiday. I must admit, I thoroughly enjoyed your tweets whilst you were away. James, I particularly enjoyed the uh, the Kilt Bulge tweet, which uh, I shall <laughs> let people find <laughs> for themselves. Think... Um, of course, if you want to follow me over there on the Twitter, you can do that at Lord H. That's L zero R D underscore H. Follow the podcast at TWWcast. Do have a little look at our Facebook page. If you've not, because we didn't actually do anything with it, have a little look now because we are trying to improve our Facebook communications uh, and uh, it is going down rather well at the moment. So please do join in our nonsense over there as well. Of course, get all of us on the uh, the YouTubes and in all the usual places, including our wonderful website, thewednesdayweek.co.uk. Now I'm going to hand you over to James for this because this is, in my opinion, an incredibly special part of this podcast. I, I can't tell you how much you will enjoy this next next segment. And, and bloody well done to James too uh, for, for doing this. So James, please go ahead, introduce this interview. Yeah, so, um, well, look, we've all got a story to tell, haven't we? Eddie, more than most of the rest of us. Um, but <laughs> none more so, none more so than Barry Neville. Now, Barry may well be known to um, to a fair few listeners already. I'd kind of describe him as a, a larger-than-life character. He's been following Wednesday for, what, coming up to somewhere in the region of you know, 50 years or something now. Um and he has a lot of stories to tell. So much so that there's actually a book that's been written about his, um, well, his life, really. His his stories, his memoirs. Uh, and a lot of that is about his years following Wednesday. And a quick mention here to James Goodenough and to John Stocks, who are helping him uh, put that book together. Now, just last night, I went along and I met Barry at the Genting Casino. Um, to, well, to have a chat with him and find out a little bit more about him. A couple of quick disclaimers before um, before I, I, I click play. Um, I know that from time to time we all let out a little bit of a swear on the podcast. Uh, as you can imagine, the language in this interview is extremely colourful at times. So be aware if you are offended by strong language. As you can probably imagine, the subject matters are also quite colourful and they do touch on things you know, such as violence at football matches and other activities which some people may find offensive. So so Barry, um, it's a little bit difficult to kind of know where to start really because um, you're someone that a lot of Wednesday fans will know, um, not just for being at games but for being head doorman at Roxy's uh, and at the Travellers Inn, yeah. um, for your time running the Merry Monk in Manor Park. Park yeah. um, I want to talk poker with you a little bit later on as well, but first things first, so you started following Wednesday in the mid-70s. Mid um, how did that come about? How did you kind of get into following Wednesday and going to games? Basically, um, I think it was Oxford away. I went Oxford away. Um, there was a little bit of trouble in, in one of in one ends. And I bumped into a black kid. And I, I basically, I stood outside of him while we were at it with these, these Oxford fans. And, and then they found out they were all going in crazy days that night, you know, week after. So I went in crazy days. I started having a drink with him, and then it just took off from there. But the thing is, in the days here, they were mixed Wednesday and United. There was odd few United fans, but we all got on. And they were like wedgeheads at the time. And we just started going to match. And it, basically, after the Oxford match, I went 15 seasons home and away without missing a game. Oh. And that was in bad times, that was in third division. Uh, going to Plymouth midweek, setting off like November, setting off at five in the morning to get to Plymouth, getting back like 11 o'clock next day. And yeah. not only that, you're going on Dragon, front gate, 
everybody will know Dragon if they, you know, like if they don't like a big old fucking rundown car, uh, caravette, basically. <laughs> 30 mile an hour on motorways and oh, seriously, it were good downhill. That's about the best. <laughs> it was fucking brilliant, but it were all good lads what went on it. Had some good times. Had some, obviously, we, we were them sort of people that if outcome at outcome, we never backed off. We never backed off. We never went looking for it until mid 80s. We, you know, like when football hooligan did kick off then. But like we, ne we never really did all. We we just went out drinking, went out drinking, had a laugh. We even went in fancy dress. <laughs> not end at season, not end at season. I remember I, uh, there was one time I never turned up. I don't know a wedding or something like that. They've got a derby in them. Uh, they've got in fancy dress with platforms on. <laughs> Flares the lot. There's about forty of them. They look absolute cunts, honestly. <laughs> And basically, they've gone into town at Derby. DLF's come for them. A lot's gone up. And they were just, the coppers wouldn't lock them up because they were laughing that much of what they got on. We've come out for a good day. They were fucking crackers. They bore me, honestly. I've had some times, I've had some brilliant times. I remember going to Exeter. We'd come out at Crazy Daisy, two o'clock in the morning, getting on a coach and going to Exeter. Getting to Exeter for like eight o'clock, nine o'clock next morning. Uh, when Wednesday got promoted, I think we lost two, no? but we got promoted because uh, somebody else lost. What a day that was. They were brilliant. Day. You see, I earned my money. I could get on a coach with no money. Uh, basically, I got spot the balls. I used to sell spot the balls. Back in the 70s, it was a pound ago, 30 quid to the winner. They always say, oh, you know, no team and that. Some of them I did. I stitched them up my cent, you know, but. That's fucking way it were. That's, I had to earn my money and that was it. But I got my mates extra money at the same time. But when I got to the scratch cards, I couldn't fiddle it. There was no way I could fiddle it. I used to do them on gate, on travellers. My job was to work there. I got to see the manager. I said, I don't want anything. I'll run the door for you. Pay another kid to work with me. Um, basically, I'll sell tickets. If I don't sell tickets, I don't get paid. I used to sell three or four at a time, but it went up to two quid a go. Uh, paying 80 quid out and having 80 quid for myself. I was like, up between 200 and 400 quid a match. That's how I earned my wages. It was good, honestly. I, you know when we played Man U in FA Cup, in the in Rumble O's Cup final? Weenie run a coach, run two coaches. Uh, we were going to Arrow, stayed in an hotel in Arrow. He let me on coach for now, gave me a room for now. I got on coach, I ain't got a dime. I got on first coach, I sold a ticket. We got in a traffic jam on M1. I jumped off first coach, went and got on second coach and sold another ticket. You know, by end of, end of game, when we won no one nil, Rumblow's Cup, I had three grand in my pocket. <laughs> I had a fucking weekend and off. Absolute dog's nuts. No trouble, nothing, but fucking brilliant, seriously. Absolutely brilliant. And, and, the pub I went in, we used to go in Merry Monk. Before I even got it, I was going in there at 17. Uh, my brother David owned it. He was in as a manager. It was a busy, busy place. But we were mixed. We were Wednesday and United again, like we should do on the States. But everybody knew everybody. Everybody had respect for them. Uh, and I got married 1982 or something like that. I can't remember what year. 1982. We've got, I've got married. We've gone to, uh, me and Anne's gone to. Paris for a week, a day after we got married. And we're playing Burnley on Saturday as I get back in cup. So somebody's got me a ticket. Because I got at matches all the time. I've got you the ticket, don't worry about it, you know, like when I get back. So I'm gonna Burnley next day. I've been married one week. We get in a get like two minibuses. I'm gonna find out as 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 I get on minibus, the tickets of what Burnley end. Because Wednesday ends sold out. Is that you know like it's like a quarter final at League Cup. So basically we get on get on this minibus. We go to this little village outside, outside Burnley. And we all sat there and we're having a drink. It, there's a wedding on in that afternoon. They've got to be, there's a wedding on. And there's all little plates out on the table. And basically there's lettuce on this table and a bit of cucumber. So I've gone into the toilet. As I've gone into the toilet, I've heard this big roar and everybody laughing, but it were different. So I thought, what the fuck's going off? So 
zips up, gone out. As I've gone out, barman stood there and he's got a fucking shotgun out. No word of a lie, and he got it stuck up Paul's nose, this shotgun. Stood laughing at him, saying, go on, kid, pull the fucking trigger, because when there's pull trigger, this lot are going to kill me. And his blokes just stood there shaking, not knowing what to fucking do. And everybody's laughing. So they all walk on out and start picking lettuce up and eating it. So they're all eating this lettuce. So she gets up, phone his wife. Police are coming, police are coming. About five minutes later, somebody said, comes in and starts laughing. Police are here. It's one copper on a push bike. One copper on a push They were kicking him up fucking ass. Get out, you silly cunt. They were hoping to censor drinks. And anyway, it ends up going at match. He's quieting down, it gets to about quarter past two, so we all get up many bus, all drunk, all had a drink. Get to the match. Right, when we get in, we walk down to the bottom. As you do in 80s, get down at the bottom, sing Wednesday, and then lock us up, which you always did anyhow. We used to do it all over fucking country. So we've gone in, this Burnley, this, this side terrace is massive. Anyway, we've gone down at the bottom, there's tw about 20 of us. So we're stood there in this thing, it's all like fences at the back of us. Next thing, somebody clocks us, so the lock goes up. And I mean, the lock goes up, fucking five to three, we're all fucking brawling, proper stood toe to toe. Paul, they sat, this is our fucking dafty, we were out, what were our week? They were up floor getting kicked so low, and I'm just stood there, fucking toe to toe, swinging my arms, hitting whoever comes near me. I've ended up with two black eyes. And the old coppers come and I looked round and Charlie Williamson's brother, who's gone with us, is on fucking fence like that. And Charlie's come down left wing. He's play he's actually on pitch, Charlie Williamson. He's gone like that to his brother. What the fuck are you doing? He's having a laugh. And he, he's fucking pointing, we're having a laugh. And he's got his hands clinging on these fucking fences. And Charlie Williamson's on pitch going, can't believe it. <laughs> it's fucking right laugh. And you know what? In them days he never got turfed out. You didn't get arrested. They took they took you out of fucking thing and put you in with other fans. Yeah. You know they gave you the, basically a clip coppers. That was it. But no happened. And that was it. We just got moved off. They were funny. They were funny days then. They were fucking brilliant. Seriously. They were crackers. That that lot in Merry Moon. Of course, you're um you you you're mentioned in the Blades Business Group book, aren't you? You're kind of referenced in 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 that. What I forget you... what it calls me in that. The Cowans. Granville. Calls me Granville, that's it. With that, um, with I copped him. I, dro I dropped him fucking big time. That, uh, oh, fucking, what's his name now? Idiot propagating. Come bouncing at us out. He'd been at it all day, shouting odds. And I've gone, like, when they've caught Weenie, they've caught Weenie with the fucking slabs and everything. It was sick what they did to him. But, like, yeah, you basically, we've got these on a fucking, in a dead end. They can't get out. They've got all these house bricks they're throwing them. Next thing, another 10 taxis pulled up at back of us. There's another 40 got out, so we like blocked in now. So you can only wait to fight your way out. So basically, I'm just fucking hitting anybody. So as I've come out, as I've come out of this thing, Rick, they're fucking all trying to have a pop at him. And I've just got upside of this Andrew one. And I've just hit him. Whoa! His legs have gone completely. And in that book, Cowan says he run into uh, nursery. He said he run in there. Did he fuck run in there? Listen to me. As true as I'm sat here and I swear on my grandkids' life, that kid never come near. I stood outside doing a full table of glasses and I just launched every fucking glass at them. They couldn't come near me. I ended up getting dragged in with Flynn. They just went woof and dragged me inside. That was it. And they, they, he never fucking come near him, believe me. And he said in that book, he might as well have big, wore a big Superman fucking thing on him. <laughs> Seriously, plank, <laughs> fucking idiot. Tell me, um, tell me about um, like Derby days in the in the the seventies and eighties. Then what what were they like? Oh, they were crackers. Town were mental. There were no CCTV either. So there's one there's one particular time we've um, we've gone into town. You just waited for sirens. If you heard sirens, then you fucked off. That's basically what happened. You'd bump into them. There might be 150 to a dozen, 150 of them, and we've had it a few times, you know, all over town and everything. One of the lads, I'm not mentioning his name, but we've gone on this, uh, we've gone out this particular night, we bumped into him. There's a mass, mass brawl, there's about 100 on each side. Mass brawl uh, up near Dickens. 
basically coppers have come so we've had to fuck off he's gone down this back alley to get out that way he's like four of us four wednesday four of them i'm not here with them at the time so this this kid's mouthing off so basically one of the lads have, have arranged to meet him no problem so comes to sunday where they meet him turns up it's four of us four wednesday lads they jumps out he's about 15 of them but they all jumped out with bats but one of the lads who were way up way out lot can't say his name obviously but basically what's happened is he's jumped out fake this kid what's going off they've all pulled bats out come on you wednesday bastards kid who's wheels he's just gone like that opened this court pulled the sawn off her i just went you want some you put them away or fuck off they've all dropped them so they've had a one-to-one -one these my mate ends up fucking bashing him all over and pull his fucking eye out that's how it were you fucking you know you wanted bollocks you got bollocks and that was it you wanted to shout your mouth off you had to stand up to it that's how it went that's how it were back then they were they were crazy the same in town i got i got locked up by one in dickens uh we're in dickens having a drink basically they've all come just understand there's all women a lot in this pub right. so they're all they're all, all up one side they've come in they're up one side all starts launching glasses and everything women are screaming to get out of the door they've all piled up you know like you're trying to get on top of them or help them up or whatever and basically what happens is i've helped a couple of women up but i'm i'm one of them here folks going off like that i was laughing i didn't give a fuck that's how they were you laughed about it and basically i'm helping these up getting them out and one thing and another uh i've ended up getting locked up because these birds said i was laughing she thought you know like mr neville thought it was fun, funny this and they were going off but i've ended up getting it dropped because the reason being is the copper has fucking followed me with this bird when i'm on a bus and i've sussed them and i've got i've got somebody to a witness that's hired me to say that they were following me and were pointing me out so she could pick me out on an id parade and i've got it this is how i got away with it. dirty bastards tried everything to get us seriously but i've got locked up one of mates uh he'd gone outside he ended up getting his throat slashed he got his fucking throat cut he lived but we were all we all went up to hospital to northern to you know like make sure they were all right when we got up there it was just full of women all we cuts all over the fucking heads and everything but they blame me i didn't know i walked into a pub to get a drink and they've launched all glasses at me not to do with me i'm just actually in this pub i've never thrown a punch i've never thrown a glass or anything and they tried to put it all on me i said they were they've fuckers and i said you couldn't go out with your missus if i went out with my mates and we bumped into any blade and he were out with his missus i would not let anybody go near him that would rule the game if i if if i went out with my missus and bumped into them i know a lot of friends what's done it they've gone out with their missus and they've had the missus have had beer thrown all over them and they've got slapped when they've walked into them it don't work like that i've never done that you can't do that it's fucking wrong i think often people that have maybe been involved in the how can i describe it kind of wilder side of, yeah. of, of football we're often accused of maybe not being that bothered about on the pitch stuff but you've always been a, a, a big fan and, and this, still is are now. this is what annoys me i hear, I hear all these aren't proper football fans i'm a proper football fan i go everywhere with wednesday i follow them through thick and thin you know like fucking sat and cried at a match you know this i've sat i've sat and cried when we've when we've got fucking beat or look or getting relegated and things like that when i got to win you know when we got to wembley it run blows cup i've got the very top seat and i'm up there with my brother do you know why i've got these tickets right listen i've gone to portsmouth that day when tickets went on sale at six o'clock in the morning when we set off from gate on a coach there was about 30 people queuing outside wednesday outside the cop end for tickets but weren't going on sale while well next morning that's full we've got back from portsmouth 10 o'clock at night it's pissing down with rain i'm absolutely fucking drenched through being on an open end at, 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 at portsmouth i'm drenched wet through i've got a long mac on i'm freezing i get here and there's ten thousand people 
queuing round the stadium waiting for tickets for this and I ain't got a ticket I have not got a ticket for this cup final so there's about 15 of us all in the same boat I've got my money I've spot the ball so I'm alright I can go and buy one now so I've got straight off coach and where this we, drops us off we're out back at fucking we're, we're right at back fuck what are we doing here we're true Wednesday fans us we've not missed the fucking game these are people what's jumped on bandwagon who well, ain't got a season ticket or anything like that and they want a ticket for this so I starts walking around as I walk around I bumps into my brother in queue at bike he's got a black sack in his hand with a flask and some sandwiches and a, a blanket in it to wrap round him Kevin what are they doing come here come here get I've, I've got a place I'm like, come with me no no I said, come with me and I've got hold him by the arm and I've dragged him with me I've gone straight up front Fuck you. Well, we've been here since eight o'clock, six o'clock this morning. I went, I've seen you. I was on that coach to fucking Portsmouth. I'm in front of you. Fuck off. This 15 has just gone straight up front. Seriously, I know it sounds bully, you know, like as though you're bullying, but we're not. We're true Wednesday fans. We're, we're the fucking things. What we're here when we were 8,000 fucking league game, 8,000 at a league game, 6,000 at a league game. Not these people who jump on bandwagon like we have just done now, where we got to Wembley, playoff final, and all of a sudden we've got another 10,000 Wednesday fans come for hard at fucking woodwork. Because these aren't Wednesday fans. Seriously. I don't give a shit what they say, they can slag me off whatever they want. We, anyhow, I've got the front, basically. This, this is a funny thing. I've always used my head, me, to earn money and everything else. They open the gates about 12 o'clock, so we can go in. You're letting us through a turnstile so they can clock them how many's coming in for these tickets right go up to that top they're going to get served first so we goes in get some get a seat at top we're on south stand and it's old south stand at the time you know where it were like double tier we're on old south stand we're up near top so it gets about an hour in i'm fucking ganging for a drink i said to kevin i'm gonna go and find someone so it goes down when it goes down do you reckon all all idiots are wrecking all these fucking drinks things. You know, they've not knocked, knocked doors in at old wooden, you know, like you're an old wooden and all that lot. They've knocked doors in and they're wrecking these fucking things. This is our club. And they're wrecking their own club. They're throwing stuff about tea urns. I'm like, I'll pick this tea urn up and put it on side. And there's all these coffee cups, Oxo cups, and all this lot, Bob Room. Like, fuck you. I've got these. I've gone and got Kevin's black sack and I've filled all these up with these bovril cups, coffee cups and what. And I've just got them in my hand. Gets to about three, four o'clock in the morning, everybody's gagging for a drink. I've gone down, filled this tea and up. Come on, boys, pound a drink. <laughs> fucking took a fortune. <laughs> Seriously. I took an absolute fucking fortune. It was funny as fuck now. I ended up earning money while I was sat waiting for a fucking cup final ticket. What a fucking laugh that was. They were smashed it up. Why would you do that? It's just, there's, there's no incentive to do it. You just smash this fucking place, you know, these, these cafe things up. It was stupid, absolutely stupid. I earned my money, so he did the centre favour by smashing it up. I just filled these tears up, plugged it in, switched it on. Come on, boys, Bob Room. Fucking hell, pound a piece. That's dear. They're only like 50 pence in the 80s. Fucking <laughs> beautiful. We're at a match, aren't we? <laughs> Pity there were no fucking pies, I tell you that. They had a late killing. If I could have got in touch with a fucking fish and chip shop, I'd have got about 300 pies, I'd had a fortune. Had an absolute fortune. You, you're still very much an avid Wednesday fan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's your kind of take on. Um, on where the club's at because it's it's quite a sort of an unsettled time at, at, at the moment what, what do you kind of think about um about sheffield wednesday in in 2018 listen to me the, 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 what is pissing me off is the, some of these idiots they ain't got a club and i'm calling them idiots because they are fucking idiots they're asking for chance here to leave this club do you know if he walks away we're bust we're bankrupt i've sat in here many a time with him and i've sat and talked to him but I'll tell you what now. He's different. He's Wednesday through and through. And all this where they're not wanting to play because of uh, thingies and this, that, and all. What a fucking bunch of pricks. 
This is a load of bollocks. It's injuries. It's injuries. We've had a worse season. All right, we've got we've got players what should be coming in and doing job, what aren't good enough. That's down at the people who buy them. And I don't think I don't think he had it out to do with that. As for Jordan Rhodes, they're all slagging him off. Play him, play him right with somebody to feed him off. He'll get goals. No danger he'll get goals. He's proved it. He's proved it loads of times. But as for where they slag him off, it's fucking pathetic. Seriously, chance here is your man. He'll, he'll, he'll take us up there, you believe me. It, you've got to look what Wolves have done now. But they've gone over this, is it FFP or whatever it is? They've gone all over this fair play thing. If Wednesday had done that, and a 40 million fine. They get a 40, Wolves will get a 40 million fine, without a doubt. They'll not get points deducted. You've got that idiot down there, Chris Wilder, telling people that everybody what goes over it should get a fine and this. Because it looks like Wednesday's gone over it, uh, so he said, by a million. So he's on about hitting him in my pocket and all that lot. He's a fucking prick down here, isn't he? Come on. <laughs> he is an absolute fucking prick. Chris Wilder. What a fucking lemon. <laughs> Seriously, come on. He's rating it. He's serious. He's, 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 took, he's took a bunch of fucking clowns and got them playing together. What do you call him who's lead scorer? Him who wins he had? Uh, Leon Clark. That Clark. Oh, fuck. He won't, he won't get it many monks inside him. He's fucking useless. Seriously. They all go mad on Hattie New. Do you know Hattie New? He comes on that pitch and gives 110%. The number of times I've seen over the last few seasons where we've looked down and out and he's come on pitch and changed the game. He's changed the game for us. I would sooner have him than that clown down there. Seriously. And he's their leading goal scorer. And then you've got Billy Sharp, who makes me look fucking anorexic. <laughs> fucking hell, what a joke. What a fucking joke, seriously. Come on. Do you reckon this season's just a one-off then? Of course the, it's a uh, one-off. It, it, there's just the that many bad injuries. Like it will be re restored next season. I think it will be. I think it'll add... It, this Josh, Josh, I think he's... I don't know how to say his second name, so I'll just call him Josh. <laughs> fucking Luak or whatever it is, I don't know. But um, I think this kid's clever. I think he's a different manager. He's shown that by not bringing him back, not forced. He will panic, you know, like everybody who panics there. He's, oh, we're going down. We're not fucking going down. We were never going down. But he's shown that by just bringing them back gradually. I think that's what Carval did. He, he come back and he, he's just like, don't get me wrong, I didn't want Carval to go. In a way, I'm glad he's gone now because this bloke's shown what, what, what really happened. You know, but he's not rushed them back. He's not, he's not panicked or anything. You know, or all like that. I, I just think next season, he'll buy good. Get rid of shit. I don't know, that buttercup. Why have we got him from Derby? Fuck you, seriously. Why have we got him from Derby and sent Win all that way? I know he had a bit of bollocks with Forest Thierry, like, but you wouldn't do that, would you? Come on. The kids are, and he were going by me for him, Carval. Oh, yeah, I'll have him. Kim Buttercup. <laughs> we've, um, we've talked a fair bit about football. As I mentioned earlier, another yeah. thing I'm quite interested in is your poker career. We, we talked a little bit about it before we uh, kind of started recording, yeah. um, because <laughs> I mean you've you've won quite a bit over the years, and we're not talking like hundreds, thousands. I mean, give us a kind of a ballpark estimation how much you reckon you've you've won over the years. Three quarters of a million, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. I had a I had, I had a twelve week period where a kid who was travelling with him, he's now doing life in prison. Fucking come, come out and... He, he, shot, he was shooting at somebody at a wedding. Crackpot. Come out of prison, got six years for that, come out of prison, for that six weeks, and then chopped his wife up. While his kids were in fucking house. She had an argument. We don't gear, weren't it? You know, that, that gear does not for anybody. He, he won 200 grand in space of... What? 14 week? And ended up on gear. Ended up big time on gear. Just fucked his life up, right? He weren't a bad player either. But he's now doing minimum 27 years in prison. Fucking lunatic. But good kid. Believe me, I know I'm saying this, like, but with me, he was always spot on. You know, he never, never had an argument with me, you know. I learnt him a lot. I t he got to the final table at Newcastle. Uh, and I, I, uh, I, like, pulled him off table every time I thought he made a mistake. and. He ended up winning it for 80 or grand. 
a kid called Richard Trigg were third. He was from Sheffield as well. He's European number one online now, this kid. Wow. Richard Trigg. He's had multi millions. It's more like six or seven million quid online, him. Wow. Massive online player. I've had my times, I've had some laughs. You know, different things. He bar me in here. That's how I met James. Uh, James good enough. Uh, somebody put online that I should write a book. Uh, and James come on and said that, and then he got together with John Stocks. John Stocks, like, written five books. He's a poet, he's written, just written about works uptown. Okay. And uh, that's how I got into them. They, they come up and we have meetings every month. Uh, I send them messages every, you know, if I think at all. I've got fucking Alzheimer's now, because I can't, I think of things in bed. When I get up next morning, I forgot it. Seriously, I'm 58 year old now, it's, it's just getting to me. So when, um, what kind of stage are the book's at? When, when can we kind of expect it? Well, we're hoping to get it out for um, summer of this year. Yeah, there's some funny stories in it. James will tell you a few of them. There's some really funny stories, but it's been crackers. Like, I forgot them now. I'm sat here trying to think of one now, and I fucking can't think. I told you I've got Alzheimer's. It's been fucking mental, this. I'm guessing kind of the years that, that you worked at, um, I mean, particularly Roxy's, I mean, the stuff that, that you must have seen, the stuff that must have happened. Oh, it was funny in there. I, I, the one now in there, working away, you know, and, and what happened were, they, in that place, they had a certain music what you play if there were any danger and we had to evacuate. And it was like um, a nursery rhyme. They played this nursery rhyme. When they played this nursery rhyme, you had to evacuate. You knew something was wrong. We stood up doing this particular night. Uh, and one of bar staffs comes up. She's got a nice bucket in her hand like this with a fucking bottle of champagne. Well, it, it weren't champagne, it was that pomegranate shit, you know. But they charged 30 quid for it, didn't it? It was absolutely fucking wild. <laughs> She's come as I can see why somebody's done this, because they was, you know, like they didn't like the stuff what they fucking faced them. So she come on, she think, I've got this here. So what is it? She said, ice bucket. What do you want me to do with that? Said, it's got a bottle in it and underneath it, it's chicken. <laughs> what? So it's fucking underneath, there's a fucking big block with wire stuck out and it's chicken. And are you fucking deaf? She said, why what's up? You know, since as you were talking, thick as big, what's up now? I said, just come here. So I've took bucket off her. I've gone and put it in exit. Gone to the DJ, said, look, play this. We need everybody out of here. So basically what's happened is we've had to evacuate. People's left the courts upstairs. It's fucking, it's a summer's day anyhow, like, but we've, we've got them all out of this place. I end up fucking facing up back door, me, because this kid wants his court. And I've got 25 kids wanting to face us just because we've had to get them out because of this bomb. Somebody's put a fucking bomb in place, we've saved a life. Anyhow, bomb disposal had to come from all the shop. And, uh, and I, they blew it up on the car park, on the Roxy's. They were fucking crackers. Wow. It's just a fucking, it's chicken, what do you want me to do? You know, like, <laughs> you fucking daft or something. <laughs> well, what, what am I to do? <laughs> no, that's how she was talking. Not realising she's got something in her arms what can blow her to pieces, the silly bastard. And she's, what, look at it! And shaking it like this. <laughs> Don't shake it, you silly fucker. <laughs> fucking hell, it was unreal. <laughs> fucking bomber, honestly. We had, like United had the AGMs here. Two seasons on trot. 3,000 of them coming in for it. And every year you submit the same. All right, Barry, you know, as you're walking in, you know our Wednesday, you know our we all, all lads. It was, all right, Barry, all right, Barry, blah, blah, blah. They go in, get to about one o'clock, they've all had a drink, they all want to go. So they all go in out, when they got outside, not when they were in, when they got outside. Come on, Neville, get out of here, you fucking idiot. I just stand laughing at them. You know, the back doors, back exits, they're banging on exit doors. Not coming at front door, where the monk steps. They won't come there, they were at back exits. Why are you going round these? Because there's no cameras. I went, mean, cameras are there and there and all, you fucking idiots. You think they only got to put them up front door? You fucking clowns. <laughs> come on, Neville. And it was same. Year after, they come walking in, same people. All right, Barry. All right, Barry. Come on, Neville. <laughs> fucking idiots. Fucking absolute lemons. Just laughable. Seriously. That's some laughs. Proper brawls. Like, I've got my sisters coming out of one day. 
My head ain't so quiet, it's untrue. She's totally Harry's opposite. She's, so she's come in one night into Roxy, I've looked after her, made sure she's sound. I'm stood on the door, it's about five to two. Barry, somebody's hit your sister, what? As soon as this has gone on, what the fuck? And it's down at the bottom of the ramp. Not in rocks, is it? It's at the bottom of the ramp. So as soon as I budged, five fucking doormen's come with, what's up? And I've told them. We've gone down, there's a coach load of kids. One of them slapped her because he tried to have a kiss off her and she, she told him to go away, blah, blah. And he slapped her. We've knocked fuck out of these. You know, the, the, the one thing in my life, you never touch my family. You touch my family and I'll, I'll, I don't give a fuck who you are, I'll give you a problem. Seriously, that's how it is. Well, you know what I mean, I, I, love, I love my family. I've got a brother, Kevin. He's, uh, he lost his leg in Thailand. He got on plane. He had a little nick on his foot, on his toe. When he got off plane, this, this had moved up to his end of his toes. When he got off plane, it's gone to his ankle. My brother's, my other brother, David's picked him up from hospital. Come on, I'm taking you to hospital. He said, no, I don't want to go. I said, why? He says, you've got to go to hospital. I want to take this sword. When he gets to hospital, Dave told him, he said, if you want to come, you'd have been dead next morning. Within an hour of getting in hospital, he took his leg off below, didn't he? Fucking unreal. It's, anyhow, we thought that was it. We honestly thought that was it. But basically what's happened is, um, six years later, five years later, my brother's had uh, a new thermostat for in combi boiler. And he's not realised, Kevin. He sat down in shower, had a shower, he's looked at his one to one foot what he's got in his mucket. So he gets a bowl of water, puts it on the floor, puts his foot in it, not realising this water is as hot as a kettle and he's got no, foot, no feeling in his foot. And he sat and looked at it. I had a photo on my phone, I'd deleted it. He's, he's put his foot in this thing, and it's just, it's like a pork cock. You know what he put in an oven? He would, ended up taking his other leg off. And I tell you what, he's my fucking hero for what he's done. He's back on his feet, well, on his stumps. He's back up and he's walking about on his stump. I've never seen anybody like him. This snow's fucked him up. You know what we've just had? Yeah. He's absolutely different graver. And he wouldn't, you know some I can't say he's ever hit anybody in his life. Or he can't, he's hit me when I was younger. When I was about 10 years old, he used to fucking hit me and bully me. <laughs> Other than that, I can't say he's, I've never seen him argue with anybody. Nice. That type of person. Just shows you what shit world we live in, mm. doesn't it? Mm. Mm. The best ones are always fucking, Hurt or took off us and this, that, and other. Mm. It's like now with Steve Lee, a good friend of mine, he's just passed away. He had cancer um, really bad. He got it all over. I'm gutted. I got, I got a message off uh, Emmett the other day telling me mm. that he'd, uh, he'd just, I missed a, fo a phone call off her. And I got a message saying that he'd just passed away. I was, I was gutted. Steve works on doors next to me. Right. You know, he were in, he were in gear, I were in travellers, but... A lovely kid, lovely bloke. Comes to us all, but it's just a bit gutting, isn't it? Yeah. It's gut-wrenching when it's friends, you know? It's one of them things. I, I imagine that, kind of over the years, you, you, you must have made, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of, of, of friends, because you've done quite a lot of different stuff. Yeah. You worked in the steelworks for quite a long time as well, didn't you? I've got, I've got friends all over the country. I met a lot of... Um, a lot of rich people, and I mean super rich people. I'm not getting any names like, but what 120 million, and you know, you know they they worth 50 million and, and stuff. But they're not, they're not, up, you know, they they're not, they don't think they're above anybody. Where they can look down on them because I've got this much money. Fuck off you. You're not that sort of people. They're all genuine people, uh, and I met a lot of people. What a Thieving bastards, you know, con merchants and, and this, that and other. I've done a bit in my time like that. Not not to what some of these done. I've met there's like five or six what I can fucking one, one of them from Birmingham. You wouldn't think butter melted in his mouth. Uh, a kid called Oh I'll get back to him in a minute. I'll remember his name in a minute. Uh He's a murder. He got, he got done for murder. He murdered his wife in Arizona desert. He bought an hotel. Basically, uh, she's gone missing. 
is Chuck Young and gone to Vegas and tried to shoot his head, but missed his head. How the fuck can they try to shoot his head in head and miss it? He's got Young in, in room with him as well. So police have arrested him. Anyways, come back to Great Britain and, and lived here. Marcus Bebb Jones is his name. Google his name, Marcus Bebb Jones. Uh, basically what happened when um, he come back and lived in Britain. Got no conviction for it at all like that. And about 15 years later, somebody found a skull in the desert and it was his wife's or his ex-wife. She was Filipino or something. So they said they weren't going to extradite him if he got death, death penalty. So basically what happened was uh, he didn't get death penalty. They said they'd life him off. So he got sent back to America and got lifed off without parole. Marcus Bebb Jones, have a look, Google it. It's obvious from um, the stuff we've talked about that, I mean, you've certainly had like, you know, a, a colorful life oh, today. Definitely, and, and we've definitely. probably barely scratched the surface, yeah. but I've got to kind of ask, have you got any regrets? Regrets? I don't know. Probably chipping in with aces on a King Guard board. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I'm knowing I will be on. No, it's, um, I don't know. Probably when I put them three kids in hospital when I was younger. When I was at skating ring, I was a fucking crackpot. Before that, it was my first job working doors. Uh, I got banned from skates. The only way I could work, the only way I could get in was work on, on ice. I was a bouncer on ice and I couldn't fucking skate. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I couldn't skate. Throwing them off when the speed session come off and you couldn't catch them. They were just fucking skating away from me as I was waiting and just fucking dragging them up. Uh, I got in skates, I was 16 years old. Just some bollocks gone off outside. Uh, when I've gone outside, you know, three coaches from all and they were bullying everybody. You know, like three coach loads, there's fucking 150 of them. Lads and lasses. Uh, I've just picked three house bricks up and I put three kids in hospital. And I'm getting three months. Uh, we're on calendar a lot. That's the biggest regret, basically. Should never have done that. Prison. It weren't prison, actually, but it were detention centre, North Sea Camp. I'll tell you what, you know, like all these now when I go to prison, they get in the fucking computers in the room, they get in televisions, they get their own phone and blah, 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 and all this bollocks. It'd be none of that if they got what we got. I went, I did three months in North Sea Camp, and I tell you what, it sorted me out. I never wanted to go back. I had to march everywhere. You had to get up in the morning, make your bed, but not make it. You made a bed pack like you were in prison, uh, in, uh, in army. You had to make this bed pack 12 inch by six inch. You couldn't go fucking 12 and a half or 30, you know, you couldn't go above it. Otherwise you ripped it off and then you, you lost everything. I used to get 56 pence a week wages. 56 pence for Mars, I used to buy like an odd Mars bar and things, different stuff like that. You no sugar, fucking different. You sat down in the dining room, you got your dinner and you sat there and you couldn't talk. You couldn't say a fucking word. Sorted everybody out, believe me. There weren't many went back after that. This work, you, you seen that film with Carly, haven't you? The scum, well, like that, but worse. Seriously, they got away with murder, them screws. They'd fucking whack in, you couldn't say a thing about it. Some of them, they were like little fucking weasels. You know what, screws? Proper, and I think to myself, I'd rip you to pieces, you fucking mug. And I always wished I could meet one afterwards. You know, after I'd done my time, I'd have them begging. You're fucking walking up and slapping you full on across face. You couldn't do anything back. Seriously, that's how it works. He, he taught me a lesson. Well, Barry, I mean, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, yeah. It's brilliant to meet you. It's great to chat. I'm looking forward to yeah. the book. I imagine that, you know, we're, there's going to be so much stuff in there um, that's just going to be, you know, just incredible to yeah. um, to read about. Yeah. I um, hope so. I'd like to thank James and John for doing it for me. You know, they, they've done a tremendous job. They persevered with me, you know, with me Alzheimer's and that, forgetting about <laughs> the fucking everything. So uh, it's not not only that, it's, um, we, we, we was going to call it Fifty Shades of Barry Neville. <laughs> but I think there's a, a block on it with Fifty Shades of it, so... <laughs> it looked like having to call it Mr X, because that's my nickname, Mr X. Right. Life and Times of Barry Neville. Fucking funny. 
Honestly. Thanks, Paul. I look forward it's to it. Been, Cheers, thank been, you. It's been a pleasure, believe me. by any of the issues highlighted in this podcast, then please contact Lord Hillsborough at L0RD underscore H. <laughs>